What do they have in common? A water whirlpool, a black hole and a tornado. Well, a particular shape called vortex. From galaxies to stirring milk into coffee, vortex appear everywhere in nature. Even in the subatomic world, when a stream of elementary particles can spiral around a fixed axis. Pretty much like the tip of a screw or like fusilli pasta. Scientists describe these vortex beams as characterized by the so-called orbital angular momentum, which is the quantity that describes the rotation of a body around a fixed point, precisely like a spinning top. What this means is that vortex beams can give us new ways of interacting with matter, which scientists say it is pretty important both for discovering new properties of materials, but also for new technological applications, like magnetic sensing or encoding quantum information. So, how to make a vortex beam? The strange thing about matter is that, along with its particle nature, it also has a wave nature. This means that it is possible to make vortex beams by simply modulating the wave function of a particle. To do that, scientists use particular devices called faceplates. So far, scientists have used such passive devices to make vortex beams. But now, scientists at EPFL are going beyond this idea and demonstrated for the first time that it is possible to use light pulses to generate and dynamically control a vortex electron beam on a temporal scale as small as the femtosecond. First, they prepared a chiral plasmon, which is a localized electric field configuration carrying orbital angular momentum. Then, they made this chiral plasmon to interact with femtosecond electron pulses. What they discovered was that during the interaction, the wave function of the electrons takes on a vortex modulation, as a result of a very fundamental rule of nature, energy and momentum conservation. To demonstrate this, the EPFL scientists have used their ultrafast microscope to image the electron waves both in the real space and in the momentum space. Before the interaction, the electrons can be described as plane waves. For a plane wave, the surfaces at constant phase are flat planes, similar to the layers of a lasagna. In the real space, a plane wave would appear flat and uniform, very much like a pancake, while in the momentum space, it will have a Gaussian profile, very similar to the profile of a Neapolitan cassata. If after the interaction with the chiral plasmon, the electron wave assumes a vortex structure, then the phase profile should be determined by a helical distribution, which closely resembles the shape of fusilli pasta. In the real space, a vortex wave will show a spiral pattern similar to a cake roll, while in the reciprocal space, it would appear with a hole in the middle, like a Napolitan graph, or basically a donut. After eating all the pasta and all the pastries, finally the PFL scientists did the experiments, and indeed they found that their results confirmed the theoretical predictions. As a final step, they've also demonstrated that using this method, it is possible to actively control the endiness of such vortex electron beam by dynamically adjusting the polarization of the laser pulses. Using light to dynamically twist matter waves, it is now a reality. <laughs>